Hi, and welcome to our show, Forever Paranormal, with your host, Dr. Bill and Ed, where we will discuss such things as cryptids, UFOs, hauntings, angels, unsolved mysteries, government conspiracies and cover-ups, witchcraft, the metaphysical, and more, as well as stories sent in by you, our listeners. If we can connect a paranormal element to it, we'll talk about it. And you may be surprised by what all is connected to the paranormal. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and share the show, since it would not be possible without you, our listeners. And as a public service, we would like to let everyone know that you are truly never alone, even if you think you are. The Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is 988. Just reach out. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. Hi, Deb. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Folks, we have a great episode for you this week on one of my favorite things, witchcraft. We are going to touch on a little bit about what witchcraft is and how it originated. Everyone has heard of witchcraft and has their own ideals on it. When most people think of it, they get this picture in their mind of what they learned and seen from television, books, and movies. It would be great if you could wiggle your nose, wave a magic wand, say a few words, and snap your fingers to make a pot of gold appear. But unlike make-believe, you think you know that is not how witchcraft works. First and foremost, witchcraft is not doing the devil's work. This kind of thinking is what had many innocent people burned at the stake. Male witches are still called witches, not warlocks or wizards. So what is a warlock and a wizard then? A warlock is a witch, but it's a malevolent witch. It's a male witch that uses his powers for nothing but evil. And a male witch that gets called a warlock is like calling someone a really bad name or something like that. And a wizard is like Dungeons and Dragons. No one really wants to be associated with that or... When you say you're a wizard, people think of some old guy with this big gray cape and big long beard, but that's not what a wizard is. That's more ancient times and into alchemy and things like that. Oh. One first needs a basic understanding of where witchcraft is said to originate from. There are many schools of thought out there about this, but I take it back to the beginning of man and religion. There is not a religion out there that doesn't tell you about prophets angels, different gods, etc. Let's just take a quick look at the Bible, touching on a little bit on both the Christian and Tanaka, or Hebrew Bible. Most of the things in these religious books fit right into the paranormal realm. Both of these books speak of witchcraft, typically in a non-approving way, but not always. It seems the gods did not want mortal man understanding and using the same powers as them. Think about it this way. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, who was impregnated by the, air quotes, Holy Spirit. So in other words, by a definition of the word spirit, a ghost made her pregnant. After the angel Gabriel came and spoke to her and told her the Holy Spirit would do that. Even if it was nothing more than planting a zygote in her womb. Hmm, sounds like magic, doesn't it? I thought a spirit and a ghost were two separate entities. Uh, They really are, but if you look at the definitions of the word, sometimes they get intermingled. I look at them as two different, one that's stuck and one that's passed. So which which one? Which one was the... They say the Holy Spirit in the Bible, so we'll go with the Spirit. Uh, Okay. For my take on the beginning of witchcraft, we need to look at the angels or watchers that were sent down from the heavens to watch over man. These are mentioned in both Genesis and Atonica in the following context. Now it came about when man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whoever they chose. Now, as you know, we have to figure that this was not good. Man was supposedly created in God's image, 
but was not to be equal with God. Written history tells us definitely that they had offspring which are called the Nephilim and are said to be the reason God flooded the earth. But why? The why is because their fathers, who became to be known as the fallen angels, are the ones who taught mortal men and women sin. Azael taught men and how to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets, and ornaments, and the use of antinomony, and the beautifying of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones, and all the coloring tinctures that make the different colors. And there arose much godliness, and they committed fortification, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Some jaws are taught enchantments and root cuttings, amorous the resolving of enchantments. Baraquil taught astrology, Cocobel the constellations, Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds, Aragiel the signs of the earth, Samsiel the signs of the sun, and Sariel the course of the moon. But this tale is not about that. So how is this considered witchcraft? Okay, let's look at making swords and so on and so forth. You're taking fire and grounds from the earth, and you're working them together to make a sword, right? That is something that God didn't feel man needed to know. They taught him how to use herbs and herbal medicine. So they taught him how to beautify themselves, which created vainness. Um, they taught him the signs of the earth, the, the wind, the fire, the air. They taught him this, how to use the clouds and the stars, astrology. So they, that was prophesizing, that was fortune-telling, so on and so forth. So that's where witchcraft came from. So, according to this, witchcraft goes back to the beginning of man. Witchcraft is defined as the use of sorcery or magic, communication with the devil or familiar, that is actually Satanism, not witchcraft, an irresistible influence or fascination, rituals and practices that incorporate a belief in magic and that are associated especially with neo-pagan traditions and religions such as Wicca and others. Big note here, not all Wiccans are witches and not all witches, witches are Wiccans. Wicca is a separate religion of its own. Within the witchy world, there are many different types of witches. I know of at least 25 different types. Here are some of the different types in a brief description. Folk Magic Witch. They will perform rituals or spells tied to the spirits, mostly who occupy their geographical location or their ancestors. People call this traditional approach folk magic. As traditional witches draw from the folklore of their heritage and what may have been passed down from generation to generation. What kind of spells? Most folk magic witches use spells for protection and healing livestock or healing the sick or things like that. Then you have the Guardian Witch, which follows the system and beliefs of the founder, Gerald Gardner. In the 1950s, Gardner founded the earliest recorded form of Wicca, Guardian Wicca, and it is a modern pagan religion and its own belief system and hierarchy. These witches worship the great goddess and horned god, who are both represented in covens with an appointed high priestess and high priest. Note, there are several different types of Wicca, now as some have broken off from the original concept. What is the original concept or core belief? I'm not into in the understanding of why they broke off, but I do know the original concept and core belief is Everybody is in tune with the earth. The earth is mother. Mother mother earth and the wind, the water, the rain, the fire, that is the basic of Wicca. You gotta be in tune with the earth. Then you have a ceremonial witch. Most witches perform some type of ceremony or ritual, but the ceremonial witch does so in a high esteem. This type of witch focuses on attire and certain witchy tools. This type of witchcraft is characterized by complex and taxing rituals. 
In these rituals, the ceremonial witch will often call on creatures or spirits from another realm by following a lengthy step-by-step process. What are some examples of witchy tools? All right, some easy examples of witchy tools, so we don't get in a whole lot of it, because there's a ton, would be a cauldron, would be an asmith, which is a, a pointed knife that they keep on their altar. It would be an altar. It would be a pentagram. Um, those are just some of the witchy tools, but there are a ton of them. Then we have something called a kitchen witch. Most types of witches center on a specific location, or really where their altar is located, and where they do their magic and their work, and the kitchen witch is no different. This type of witch will perform their magic in the kitchen. Their magical energy is focused on the meals that they cook or bake. This practice will usually involve caring for their own garden and herbs, and where they can rescue their resource, their own ingredients. What is accomplished by cooking meals? How how is it considered magic? Magic, excuse me. Well, let's look at making chicken soup. They would make a, if someone's ill in a in their area and they're asked to help them, they would make chicken soup with certain herbs and stuff in there to help heal whatever is ill in that person. Basically, using herbs and magic as a spell, but putting it into the food. Now we come to my favorite type of witch, the eclectic witch. We are solitary witches who use spells and magic from many different realms into our own combined type of witchcraft. Some may use herbs and candles, certain rituals and incantations. Some may use blood magic along with various forms of divination. Some may, try to, some may try to conjure things. Sorry, go ahead. What is blood magic? Blood magic is where you use blood in your spells. And it can range anywhere from a witch's menstrual cycle blood to your own blood or the person you're doing the spell for, their blood. And human and animal sacrifices just don't happen anymore. But back in the day, that was supposed to be bad magic because they used animal sacrifices for the blood. These are only a select few of the different types of witchcraft. But there are some things all witches still have in common, such as divination, which is the practice of determining the hidden significance or cause of events, sometimes foretelling the future, by various natural, psychological, or other techniques, like tarot cards, runes, and tea leaves, to name a few. Sounds like a prophet. What's the purpose of finding a significance or cause of events? Some of those may be as simple as someone coming to you and saying, I've lost my car keys. I've been looking for a week. I can't find them. Can you help me find the car keys? They can use divination to help find car keys. Sometimes it's the outcome of a war. Sometimes it's the outcome of a battle. Sometimes it's the birth of a child. Many different reasons. The use of spells, which is the practice of uttering words in a set format with magical intent. The correct recitation is considered to unleash supernatural power. Huh, sounds like a daily prayer to me. Incantations is the practice of using spells or verbal charms, spoken or sung. A written or recited formula of words designed to produce a particular effect. Hmm, sounds like a priest reciting prayers. When Christians pray, they do not say they are performing witchcraft. What significant factor separates the two practices? Their own faith. To me, they're one and the same. If you're praying to an almighty power, then you're putting spells out there. You're asking for the health of a loved one, the health of a family member, or help for yourself. But, you know, the difference between Christians and a lot of witchcraft is Christians have one God. Witchcraft can have many. There is a significant difference between witchcraft and Satanism. A large amount of folk magic witchcraft revolves around using the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in spells and incantations for many things, ranging from healing to protecting one in battle. And what is Satanism? Satanism is the worship of the devil. That's when you're doing all these things to try to bring evil upon the world and 
prey to the devil himself. Magic is nothing more than the manipulation of energy, and that is what most witches try to tap into, universal energy or consciousness. There is really no such thing as white magic or black magic. It's all in the intent and what you try to manipulate the energy for good or bad and how you're going to use it. Energy does not does exist and has been proven in quantum physics. Be careful of what you put into the life as it will come back to you. Written history tells us that even King Saul used the Witch of Endor to summon up the spirit of the prophet Samuel, even though he made it illegal in his own land. Typical double standards. History also tells us that King Solomon was given a magic ring by the archangel Michael that gave him powers over demons to build the great temple. So, can demons be all evil, or are they simply the angels who follow Lucifer and not God? Or maybe they are the Nephilim that were drowned in the great flood. Oh, but that's a tale yet to be told. Thank you for listening, and remember to like and share the show. We would also appreciate a five-star rating wherever possible to help new listeners find the show. We welcome all questions or comments you may have about this or any other episode, and our contact information can be found in the show notes of this episode. You can also follow us at foreverparanormal.com. And if you'd like to support us, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash foreverparanormal. The links to these are also in the show notes of this episode. Whatever you do, don't look behind you. Run. Hi, and welcome to our show, Forever Paranormal, with your host, Dr. Bill and Ed, where we will discuss such things as cryptids, UFOs, hauntings, angels, unsolved mysteries, government conspiracies and cover-ups, witchcraft, the metaphysical, and more, as well as stories sent in by you, our listeners. If we can connect a paranormal element to it, we'll talk about it. And you may be surprised by what all is connected to the paranormal. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and share the show, since it would not be possible without you, our listeners. And as a public service, we would like to let everyone know that you are truly never alone, even if you think you are. The Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is 988. Just reach out. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. Hi, Deb. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Folks.